So this is this being I spoke to. This is Bijou, was his name. He's got a yamoka. You can pause it here for a minute. This is, looks like a yamoka. It's actually a teleportation device. It was photographed over the desert. He's not fully materialized. He, got, he has, looks like night vision glasses here and a concave like wharf on Star Trek forehead. It's kind of uh, indented. But look at the size of the cranium from here to here. It's about four times or three times ours from here to the top of our heads. And when I was con communicating with him through these detectors, I said, is your IQ around 450? And it went beep, beep, very bright. This is his nose is hitting the light. It was the cone of light. The orb was in this direction. You'll see that in a minute. And this is his mouth, his chest. This is his left hand. His right one is on his what? And this is one leg and another. And he was the chairs that we were sitting in were right here. And he was just behind them. We think he was around four, four and a half feet tall. This is the most important photograph ever taken in the history of the UFO subject. Why? Because it's not of the machine they're traveling in. It's of an ambassador that's non-human, who came to us and greeted us at Joshua Tree. Beautiful. Next. And when we were in Florida a few years ago, these are just samples of the things that happen on every trip. There was this being, and this is sand. It looks like a halo. This is a sort of trans-dimensional energy field. Two eyes here, a head, sort of a torso, very kind of abstract, but it was a light beam that appeared and we were on the beach and I saw this shimmering and I asked the camera person, because I'm, I'm 10 thumbs with a camera, you don't want to give me a camera, I'm pathetic, give me a chest tube or a defibrillator, but not a camera. That's terrible, but true. Uh, but so this is what appeared right there in front of us on the sand, this is the sand. These are not photoshopped, this is what they actually look like, beautiful. Next. And I want to mention this, because in the early days, we went to England every year with Colin Andrews, God bless him, and we went into these contact mode, and our logo of the C-SETI are three circles connected by a line. And this shape was being visualized by us and sent up to the ETs, and we asked them to make this form. Well, of course, if you put it in three dimensions, it's a tetrahedron. If you put it into two of them together, half merge, you get a Merkaba, which is part of the very advanced technique I teach and have been teaching for a long time. So that's how that happened though. Now a member of our team, this you can do this at home, we were doing in Texas and we, he felt I should stop and this appeared, Ron Russell's a very famous space artist, and this object appeared very odd and it appeared materialize and then dematerialize broad daylight. Um, interestingly, when I was doing a briefing for the French and the, the French President Sarkozy's guys who did his briefings on UFOs came to Washington, they faxed me a drawing of exactly this object drawn by someone who had an encounter in 1960s in uh, France. Now this, of course, you probably have all seen, but it's worth noting to have me narrate it. I've mentioned this, we're on the beach and all these objects start appearing, and we suddenly have um, one and then another and then another. Um, and this is, of course, the one where you hear the guy, holy damn hot shit. Now, what's interesting is that back in those days, I didn't have this laser. I had um, a big uh, kind of like spotlight thing we used, and I was making a triangle in the sky, and they moved and made a perfect triangle in response. Meanwhile, around us, we had the electronic devices going off and these short, luminous, not materialized beings moving in the parking lot, which unnerved some of the some ladies who were there who hopped in their pickup truck and drove back to Pensacola. But, but, and by the way, this event was on the front page of the newspaper in Pensacola the next day because it was seen by a, a wide area. Each of these craft were 30, 40 feet across and were kind of blue, but this was an old Hi-8 camera. We have better cameras now, um, but this is what we had at the time. Um, and the, it went on for about 20, I think 20 or 25 minutes. Very close, these are not far away at all. 
So, and it just had gotten dark. It was in March. And um, uh, what, what I would say to people is that this was a group of folks who had never done this before, who went out. It was a, a, just sort of a one, two-day event, and this happened. Um, of course, from this event, because it found its way into the media, it kind of, the intelligence community subsequently found me. Um, so up, up until this point, I was not off the radar scope, but not so on it. This is a member of our team in um, Santa Fe. She felt the presence, didn't see it, aimed the camera, and this metallic, seamless object moving probably about five, they're estimated about 500 miles an hour. We had it analyzed for some people at NASA. And it's just partially in this dimension. You can see it's almost ghost-like, but it's a seamless disk with a bit of a dome on it um, moving across the sky. This was daytime, very close, but not a very large craft. I think it was a short-range reconnaissance craft. Um, now, I love this one. These are, just, these are just kind of put through here. We're in a cave meditating before the, the Disclosure Project event. We're leaving, and I can feel this one ET that came to me the day that uh, my close friend Sherry, who was murdered, helping me do this. You know, a bunch of us were supposed to die in the 90s. I was supposed to die. And this happened. What is this? Not an artifact. And then the kind of the spirit of Sherry was this wash of pink light, but this blue cobalt object appeared right above the cave where we were doing a meditation. Um, and someone took the picture and it was there. And this is partially in this dimension, but enough that it was quite beautiful. This particular being, I call kindness, because she's so kind and so sweet. Oh, this, you need to hear the tones of this. I don't know if you can turn the sound on. This is the one I was talking about at Mount. Yep. And, and this sound came all the way through the group. It sounded a lot more crystalline than what you're hearing on this tape. Um, this is also in the app, by the way. These tones are all on the app that you can get for your smartphones. And it was like a string of pearls, the way it moved through the group in terms of your visual. But with the naked eye, nothing was seen, but everyone heard this. And we were up in the National Forest there at Mount Shasta. Now this is just a sample of sort of a phenomenon that happens. This is me with my lightsaber. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and objects just appear that will then signal to us. And they're quite large, actually. Um, and they will do it over and over again over the course of a night. So we, we call these cosmic light bulbs, where they're flash bulbs, where they just sort of appear and light up, sometimes bright enough to light up the whole ground around where we're in our circle. And then they dematerialize again. But they're still there. I always tell people that happens, but they're still present in a trans-dimensional way just beyond the crossing point of the speed of light. Stranger still are the ones that appear in the trees or near us in the circle, like these. Boom. Now, that's, these are not artifacts. And so this is a night vision monocular, so you can't see the color. Frequently, these will be beautiful um, ruby red or cobalt blue um, objects. And uh, in fact, Emily and I were there when this one happened, right in the tree. Lights up the side of the tree and another one. Looks like a lo localized piece of lightning in front of the tree, but it isn't. So this is what you need to be aware of. Now, what's behind that light? We'll talk about that. Because if you were to go into the dimension that this is emerging from, it might be a massive ET craft that's 1,000 feet across. But all you're picking up in this dimension is its emergence into this dimension. This, you can see it actually rotate up. And then we have these objects. This looks like it's a satellite. Um, it isn't. We go out with um, satellite charts. And this was at a time of night. There were no satellites visible. And it gets very big and then moves over. 
Sometimes they'll stop and turn, change directions. So these may be very high up in the sky, and then there'll be phenomena that's happening all around us like those other objects. And the, the main thing to, to understand is that if they're doing something like this, what they're really wanting you to do, it's like an invitation, come. Well, how are you gonna come? We don't have a anti-gravity vehicle to go there. You go into consciousness and float up to them. You go to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here's another one. Often this spacecraft that I call the, the one that kindness is on, I call her that. She's an ET with a perfectly round head, like a round, um, and no hair and no ear, outer ears that I met um, in Sherry's apartment the night that Sherry passed away. And Sherry introduced me to her in the worlds of light and dream time. And every single time we've gone out since then, this ship has appeared. And it's classically blue to blue-white, diamond-white um, object. Another one. So when you go out, you want to go out with a um, satellite chart. There are apps for this, or you can print them all from heavensabove.com. And be sure that you, don't, that you rule out satellites, and particularly iridium satellites that can flare up. I've seen a lot of people, and they're mistaking it. These are the detectors when we were at Joshua Tree one year. That is a radar detector. And this is the Orion. This is Sirius and Orion. And objects just were coming on and off everywhere. And this, we're in the middle of a desert with nothing that would make these detectors go off, except it's an anomalous electromagnetic signal. And when it, this went for about uh, 25 minutes. Um, the first time. The second time, it lasted for two hours. And the last chapter of my last book is my attempt to translate all these signals into what they were conveying. It's called Extraterrestrial Contact Countdown to Transformation. That's the name. So just in a few minutes, we have all these objects lighting up like uh, orbs around us in the sky while these detectors are going. Another frequency is the EM? The one under my chair speaks loudly and softly. Right here. Okay, so we can go to the next. This is a, at the Outer Banks. We went there, and this is some of the most fascinating footage. Um, what is this? Broad daylight. We're on an ocean front. We have our whole team. And this object we had seen go into the ocean the night before, and it looks partially in this dimension. It's very fuzzy. Many of you may have seen objects like this, but when you do the contrast for it, you'll see its, its shape. Here it is. And it was hovering over the ocean very close to the house. Um, the night before, we saw an object that lit up, that materialized and dematerialized and then materialized, going at an angle into the, the ocean. Oh, oh, oh my god. That was great. Okay, watch again. We're at our site at Mount Shasta. An object in front of us lifts up right here. Yeah, it's a light ship, transdimensional. The camera guy was amazing that he could track it. He was following my laser. You'll see my laser come in. Here it is. And it, goes, it dematerializes, but it's almost like inchworming halfway in this dimension. But prior to that, we had been having a contact experience in our meditation from the beings on this ship. So this is lifting up right in front of the mountain at Mount Shasta. I do recommend you go there if you have the opportunity to practice these protocols. Now these are more of these images. Um, this is just to give you an idea of the orb that appeared. This is not a planet. It's right here by the bush. And it creates a cone of light that illuminates all the 
um, blankets on the chairs. It was very cold. And there's this weird lit area here that's this bean that once you increase the brightness, you'll see what he looks like. Looks like an angel with the wings, but that's the trans-dimensional energy field. Makes you wonder if some people have seen the ETs and thought they were angels. Um, but this is the head, the chest, one leg, the other one kicked behind in his hand. Very etheric, very just barely in this dimension, but enough that the camera got it. But we only saw the orb and heard the voices. Now there were several voices talking in the desert. Most people heard female. There was one male voice, which was this one. This is his chin on top of his head. This side is lit up. This is dark because the orb lights energy sources to the left. Does that make sense? So these are around us all the time when we're doing the CE5 uh, ambassador programs. Okay, next. Next. Yeah, there we go. So this is just this part of it cut out so you can see. And he's just hovering above the chairs here. Yeah. And this is a more of a, another contrast to kind of clarify it. So when you see these beings moving around you, it's not always uh, in 3D. Now, they have been in 3D. Um, it has happened that they have completely come into 3D and then dematerialized within seconds where they actually, you can hear their foots moving, steps moving around us. Some people don't like that. They get a little unnerved. Um, I love it. But <laughs> it's a learning and desensitization process too, to have closer and closer and closer encounters so that you're comfortable. This happened on the beach. Look at this. This is a still photograph. We actually saw this. This has happened more than once where there's an ET energy field that comes in, wraps around this Peruvian doctor. And this, this comes into the group and wraps around her. Yeah, this happens all the time when we're sitting in meditation. But it, to get it on camera is really a virtuoso act of photography. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So Outer Banks is OBX. We're on the beach at the National Seashore, and there's a highway. You'll see some headlights here. Hear the detector? OK, so that starts happening, which we know is a signal they're about to arrive. And there's a ship that appears and dematerializes, rematerializes, and watch. Boom, beep, beep. It was huge, it lit up the ocean. It was orange golden light, massive, and then it's gone. This is not a satellite. Watch, and now here's, yeah. The people have asked me, how many of these have you seen? I said several thousand. Not, not, this, this is not a rare occurrence, but this is beautiful. And we were able to photograph this. Watch, nothing there. So it came into this dimension, the signaling with the electronics, it lit up the ocean. Now watch this one, this is awesome. It keeps happening. And now watch what's gonna happen, the next one. Look at the angle it turns. <laughs> no, and then it, de it, it, then it signals to us in dematerial. Do you see the angle? All right, these are not satellites or aircraft. But then what's on the beach with us making all the tones? And then, you know, is it, it, when they're dematerialized but they're moving around us and we'll be in meditation and they'll touch us on our right shoulder or top of our head. Amazing kinds of contact happen that are very unusual and not what people think. But again, why should they do what Steven Spielberg puts in a movie? They're not limited by Hollywood, remember that. Now we're in the crop circles so last couple years ago and we're doing our protocols late at night. This is a great night photography. This is very pitch dark and I had just done a puja 
which is a Sanskrit um, ceremony. And this weird thing floats in over the crop circle and lights up the puja table. This is a detector that's on the table, but this is not. And there were, no one had a blue light out there. And transdimensional objects from ET craft that come in, and this happens very, very close to us. Um, this is one where we're in a crop circle during the daytime. This is my finger. <laughs> and no one can see this, but I feel it in my heart and my mind. You know how dogs kind of pick up every, I'm like a big dog. So, and this thing, I could feel him, the, this ship over here. And I point, and the camera person was astute enough to photograph where I was pointing and got this, this orb. Um, brought this daytime, it's not a nighttime photo. Um, that was right outside the edge of the crop circle field. Um, so uh, if you were to pull that into full 3D, it, was, it would be a very large craft. Uh, I always tell the story of the, the, in Belgium, there was a massive 800 foot diameter triangle that was fully materialized, but when it went away, what they left out of the report, the police report, it collapsed into an orb this size and then shot off into space, seen by all the military police, the gendarme. Those things are left out. Now here we're up on Woodborough Hill, and this comes in. And it's this, it looks like the sun has risen, but it's over the field here. This is the east field where all the famous big, beautiful crop circles had appeared over the years. Um, and this was a couple years ago. Um, um, magnificent. You see people turning around trying to look at it. Um, and sometimes it can come and light up so brightly that it lights up our circle like it's daytime. It almost looks like something mythical or mystical. But it's interstellar transdimensional manifestations. Now we were training the French military to make contact and this comes in. We're about to do the puja, the meditation, and that's me. And this weirdness happens. What is this? So everyone look, you see people looking, this thing flashed in with the, it almost looked like a multicolored purple thing, but the photograph of it was just this flattened disc light thing hovering right over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Oh God, it's very bright. Look at that. Beautiful. These are the big ships really you hear about at Mount it's like Shasta. It's a star now. It's like one of these stars. Mm -hmm. Look how bright that is. So this is 14,200 feet high you volcano. See and out of Everybody these sheer yeah. size, we'll have these light now ships come out. These emerge in and out of this, and it's in that sheer... You know, it's interesting they chose that area because that's so very steep. Yeah, you could never have a person there, you'd, call, you'd fall down. It's a glacier, and at one point we have 11 of these emerging out of the mountain interacting with us. You'll see a photo, and maybe in this series. I mean, we, we have thousands of these images and we don't have all day here, but I'm just trying to give you the kind of things that happen on a routine basis um, when we're out doing the contact work. Um, my sense is that this volcano is sort of like an interstellar base, just like Blanca Peak and up in Joshua Tree, uh, where they come and go out of the, these sort of kind areas. Of crystalline caverns, and they're transdimensional ETs that have been in there for a long time. <laughs> so watch this, this thing, it's right by the fence, we're at this farm, Mount Shasta's here, and this thing comes in and blips. It looks like someone's with a flashbulb camera, but there's nobody there. So. Now that sounds, seems very transient, and it is if you're only sticking with your 3D vision. But if you go into consciousness and see what was the source of that, you're gonna then see what's actually hovering, shifted out of 3D. So you say, why don't they fully materialize and just come in and shake hands? Well, maybe it wouldn't be safe for them or us to do that. Look at the shape of this, it's beautiful. No, we're just putting in sort of a, an assortment of things in these so that you get a sense. Um, so this happened uh, uh, on the coast of Florida a couple years ago. We were out there and an object, these are visible with the naked eye. There were a bunch of them. It looked like our Sea City Triangle again. It's this motif that keeps continuing. And 
over the course of a, about an hour, there were 300 of these seen. And so we were sitting in circle, and it just kept going and going and going. It was like something in a children's movie for, you know, something celestial. But um, beautiful place on Marco Island. Okay, let's go to the next series. You can go to the next one. Here you go. So this is really cool. I have some land in Colorado, and this shot up right in front of our group from the land. You can see the trail of it. Zzz, boom, light ship. You see it? Yeah. Nobody was shooting off fireworks. And look at the stars, very clear. It's a fantastic image. Now, it's not fully 3D, but it's enough in this dimension you can get the sense of it. It had been in the field with us and was launching off, leaving. Then I went out there, and there's a tree where we put Sherry's ashes, and it was right before sun, right after sunset, or right around there. And I said, "There's a golden object shimmering in the field," and he took a picture, and here was the golden, kind of a golden ship that was partially in this dimension and partially not. This is unbelievable. This is, we're standing there doing our contact protocols with our hands outstretched, welcoming them, and this appears in thin air. A point, then this, and a light going up. Not an artifact. So it comes into this dimension. Everyone sees this, by the way. Beautiful. From another dimension and another star system. And when they vanish, they're inviting you to go into their dimension in consciousness and thought. If that makes sense. Okay, well, thank you. I, yeah.